Hi everybody, I'm Mike McCrory and this is Would You Make It? I made a chessboard a few weeks ago and it's a pretty large board and I don't have pieces that are large enough to suit it. So I'm going to hand turn some that are the right size. The design that I chose is inspired by a French artist named Yves Tanguy and he was an artist in the early 1900s and in fact he came out with his design in the late 1930s. His design was much simpler and there have been other designs that have been inspired by him as well. And the design that I've come up with is just another variation of that. Um, one of the advantages of using a modern design like this is it's relatively simple to turn. So let's get started. I'm going to start with a rectangular piece and I'm going to turn it to be a round blank for the pawns. Now you want to be able to comfortably fit four pawns into an individual square for the recommended sizing. Next I'm going to start with a larger rectangular piece for the kings and the queens. And for the recommended sizing you want the base of the king to be about three quarters of the size of one of the individual squares. Now I'm parting this piece in the middle to divide it so that one half can be used for the kings and one half can be used for the queens. The base of the queen will be a smaller diameter than the king. Now I'm cutting individual pieces one and a quarter inches long and these will be used for the pawns. After cutting each piece I smooth it on the sander to make sure that I have a nice flat bottom for the next piece. And I'm using this center finder to help me to find the center of each of the pawn pieces. And then I will drill a hole in the bottom because I'm going to use a screw chuck, a homemade screw chuck, to hold the piece in place. I'm going to start with the pawns and one thing that I realized is that the names of the chess pieces vary from one language to another um, because they don't have direct translations to the English word. The name of the pawn is fairly consistent. Um, in other languages it might be a soldier or an infantryman or a peasant, but relatively the same. As I make each piece I'll briefly display the dimensions for you in case you want to try making a set like this. I'm measuring down from the top, in this case 5 eighths of an inch, to find the narrowest point. And then I will turn the diameter down to 7 sixteenths of an inch. And once I have that point at the right size, then I'll turn the rest of the piece to fit. And then I'm using a skew chisel at the top just to bevel the top a little bit. And I'm sanding it with 220 grit sandpaper and then 320 grit. While the piece is still on the lathe, I will rub on some tongue oil and then I will rub on some wax to smooth it and protect it. And there's my first pawn, only 15 more to go. Now the bishop in English is tied to Christianity in some ways, so that doesn't translate well into other languages, especially for other countries that are not predominantly Christian. Um, so in French, for example, uh, a bishop translates to a fool or uh, a court jester. In Arabic, Chinese, and several other languages, the bishop is an elephant. And in most Germanic languages, it's a runner and in Hindi it's a camel. When creating the bishop, it's going to be broken up into two different parts. I'm going to apply some black stain 
I'll let that dry for a day or two and then I can continue. The name of the piece that we call a knight translates fairly consistently into most languages to something in the same theme. So it's, it's either a horse or a knight or a rider or a jumper or a warrior. This one's a little bit shorter than the bishop, being only two and a quarter inches high. And just like the bishop, this piece is going to be made in two steps. So right now I'm turning a piece that looks very similar to the bishop, except it's a little bit shorter. And I will make two that are uh, the natural color, two that are black. I'll set them aside so they can dry for a couple of days. And then I'll come back and I'll put the head of the horse into it. Now, the name of the piece that we call the Rook uh, it has kind of an interesting story because even the word Rook is not a very common word in English. Most other languages call it a castle or a tower, but in fact this piece originally was called the Chariot. So in Persian, the word for Chariot is Rokh. Probably not pronounced exactly like that, but that's the best I can do. So Rokh in Persian soon became the word Rook in English. And the other thing that happened is that the word, that, that same word Rook in Persian um, is similar to a word in Italian that translates to the word fortress. So that's how we came upon a castle or a tower um, because those are parts of a fortress and, and castles have towers, fortresses have towers. And so that's how we arrived at the shape of this piece, which looks like a tower or a castle. In Estonian, Mongolian, and Vietnamese, it's a chariot. In Hindi, it's an elephant. And in Russian, Armenian, and Thai, this piece is called a boat. And then the same finish as all the rest. The name of the piece that we call the Queen translates fairly consistently in other languages to a queen or a lady. Um, in other languages, it could translate to a minister or another high-ranking official. And in Estonian, this piece is called the flag. I think the Queen has an elegant shape. It's fairly broad at the bottom and narrow at the top and it has a very nice curve to it. This piece is a little bit taller than the bishop, standing at two and three quarter inches. I think if I was making these again, I wouldn't stain the pieces, I would choose a different type of wood, maybe maybe ebony or something like that, so that I could do away with the staining, because it's pretty messy and time consuming. The last piece is the largest of the set. This is the king, and it stands at three and a quarter inches high. And there's no other word for this piece in any other language except for king. For this piece, instead of using a pencil to mark the narrowest portion, I used a parting tool, which was a little simpler, and I probably should have done that with all the other pieces as well. I had already made my first piece, so I'm just checking the dimensions to make sure that this one is the same size. 
and then I'll apply a black finish to this one as well. Now that all the pieces have been turned, I'm going to apply another coat of black stain to each of these pieces. Now while these are drying, we're going to head off to Myrtle Beach for a few days of rest and relaxation. Now I'm back in the shop and I want to weight each of the pieces. I made the pieces out of hickory, hoping that that would be dense enough and heavy enough, but it's really not. So I'm going to put some lead weights into the bottom. And I'm cutting these pieces out of some fairly thin end grain material, because I want the grain to match. And then I'm drilling into the bottom of each piece, making use of the hole that I had used for the screw chuck. Now I just need to make the hole bigger to be 3 eighths of an inch. I needed to be careful when drilling into these pieces because I didn't have anything that could hold the piece without bruising it, so I just held it by hand. After drilling into 32 of these, I had a little bit of skin removed from uh, the inside of my fingers and the palm of my hand because the pieces would slip pretty easily. So I'm using the same type of lead weight that a fisherman would use, and then I'm plugging it with the cap on the end. Now to finish up the bishop, I'm just using the sander to bevel the head to put a, a slope that's probably about 45 degrees. The way that I came up with the sizing of the bishop is that the top of the bishop is the same height as the queen or almost the same height as the queen and the bottom of the slope is the same height as the rook. Next I'm going to remove the plugs in the bottom of each of the pieces by sanding them off. To finish up the knight, I want to cut a slot into the top so that I can put the head of the horse into that slot. So I decided to use my existing spline jig. That will allow me to place the piece in at a 45 degree angle. Obviously, you need to be very careful while doing something like this. And then I sanded it to give it a bevel on the top of about 30 degrees, more or less. And I'm using wood glue to insert the little piece of wood that's going to represent the head of the horse. Next, I'm wiping each piece with tongue oil that has been mixed with the black stain. The last thing to do is to apply felt on the bottom. You want to use a very small amount of glue. Um, you want to have full coverage to make sure that it sticks all the way around, but you don't want to use too much because it may bleed through the felt. Once the glue is dried, I'll cut them out with a pair of scissors. and then I'll carefully cut around the bottom of each piece. 
And the way that I do this is I hold the piece upside down and I cut around holding the scissors at about a 45 degree angle. So that's a full chess set in about 15 minutes. It took about 10 minutes to turn each of the pieces on average, and then it took time to apply the finish, insert the weights, and apply the felt. So I gotta ask, would you make it?